This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this part, we are going to study multiplication of vectors by real numbers. Okay. Multiplying a vector A with a positive number delta. Okay, if uh, you just consider this delta as a positive number. Multiplying a vector A with a positive number that is delta gives a vector whose magnitude is changed by a factor delta because delta is multiplied to a vector a, isn't it? So, the magnitude, the overall magnitude of the vector is increased by delta, but the direction it will not change because we are just multiplying a quantity, we are not changing the direction. The direction is same as that of a. So, if you multiply delta to the vector a then magnitude is changed by a factor delta okay for example you just consider a simple example for this multiplication of vectors if a is multiplied by 2 let delta be 2 a positive number and a is multiplied with this positive number then the resultant vector will be how much it is delta into a where delta is 2 and a will be a is this is in the same direction as a this 2a and a are having same direction there is no change in the direction of vectors okay only the magnitude is changed if we multiply with a positive number. Okay, we can see this in the figure. See, vector A and the resultant vector after multiplying A by a positive number 2. So, when we multiply 2 where to a vector A, we get 2A. See, this is A. The first one is A. And the second one is 2, okay. This is A and this is 2A. They are moving in same directions, okay. The direction is not changed even though the magnitude is changed, okay. That is the multiplication by a real number. See, if we multiply a given number with a negative number, what happens? Now, I gave examples of positive number. Yeah, what happens if you multiply a vector A by a negative number? Yes, you just think that vector A is multiplied by a negative number and that negative number is uh, given by minus 1 and uh, minus 1.5. Let us take two examples. One is minus 1 and one more is minus 1.5. So, when we multiply this minus 1, the first vector what we get is minus a. When we multiply this minus 1.5, we get minus 1.5. So, if you multiply a vector with a negative number, we can see there is a change in the direction along with the magnitude. Okay. The factor delta by which a vector A is multiplied, it could be a scalar having its own physical dimension. Then the dimension of delta A is the product of the dimensions of delta and A. Okay, this delta what we multiply to a vector A, this delta can be a scalar quantity with its own physical dimensions or yeah, it, it's having its own physical dimension. For example, if you multiply a constant velocity vector by duration of time, we get a displacement vector, isn't it? So, if you multiply velocity with the time, what we get? 
we get displacement vector so this is the uh, dimension of this uh, v and t is uh, product of this v and t gives a new quantity that is displacement okay and if you multiply a negative number along with the magnitude the direction also changes that you can observe in this figure the first one is a and then is minus a and then minus 1.5 minus a and minus 1.5 are moving in one direction and positive a it is moving in some other direction okay so when we multiply positive numbers only magnitude changes no change in direction but if you multiply a vector with a negative number along with the magnitude direction also changes okay now let us see how to add and subtract the vectors we just saw multiplication of vectors by a real numbers in this part we are going to study addition as well as subtraction of vectors by graphical method okay so we already know vectors obey triangle law or equivalently parallelogram law of addition isn't it so we know right this vectors obey triangle law equivalently parallelogram law of addition using the graphical method so to understand this method let us consider two vectors a and b that lie in a plane okay so let us consider two vectors a and b you can see those two vectors in this figure vector a as well as vector b these two are the vectors which are lying in a plane isn't it the lengths of the line segments representing these vectors are proportional to the magnitude of the vectors okay the lengths of this uh, vectors whatever the length we write now if you if you say this is a vector a this length what it represents it represents the magnitude of the vector if it is shorter lesser magnitude if it is longer greater magnitude okay and how to find the sum of these two vectors yes to find the sum a plus b we place vector b so that its tail is at the head of the vector a okay to find the sum what we do is we place the vector b okay we place the vector b so that its tail is at the head of the vector a you are getting this right yeah and then we join the tail of a to the head of b you can see that okay we are joining the tail of a that is the point o to the head of b that is the point q this oq is the resultant vector and that is uh, given by the symbol r okay and that is the sum of the vectors a and b since in this procedure of vector addition vectors are arranged head to tail this graphical method is also called as head to tail method okay vectors are arranged head to tail isn't it so this method is also called as head to tail method the two vectors and their resultant form three sides of a triangle so this method is also known as triangle method of vector addition okay this vectors vectors a and b form the two sides of the triangle 
and this resultant vector OQ form the third side of a triangle, isn't it? So this method of finding the addition or finding the sum of two vectors is called as triangle method of vector addition. Okay. And if you find the summation of uh, vectors B and A, like B plus A, then also we will get the same resultant vector R. As you can see in this particular figure. Isn't it? So, same vector R we get if you multiply B and A or if you multiply A and B. Then, what we proved here? Yes, vector addition is commutative. The law is proved. And not only this, the addition of two vectors also obeys associative law. Okay, it also obeys associative law. As you can see in this figure, the result of adding vectors A and B first and then adding vector C. Okay, first adding vector A and B, then adding C is same as adding b and c first then adding a okay this is the associative law you can see adding vectors a and b first a plus b will get adding b and c first we get b plus c but the resultant vector here what we are getting is same isn't it The resultant vector is same for both of these. Okay, this sh shows that the vector addition is associative. Okay, it follows the associative law. What is the result of adding two equal and opposite vectors? You just tell me. What is the result of adding two equal and opposite vectors? You just consider two vectors a and minus a so you just consider two vectors one is a and another one is minus a okay then if you add these two equal vectors their sum is given by a plus of minus a isn't it since the magnitudes of the two vectors are same but the directions are opposite, the resultant vector has zero magnitude and it is represented by zero. 
and it is called as null vector or zero vector okay since both are having same magnitude but the direction is opposite the resultant magnitude what we get is zero hence it is called as null vector or zero vector since the magnitude of a null vector is zero its direction cannot be specified the null vector also results when we multiply a vector a by a number zero then the properties of this null vectors are okay it is having some properties what are those so whenever we add a vector a to this zero we get vector a back isn't it whenever we multiply delta with a null vector zero we get the result is also zero whenever we multiply vector a with null vector whatever the result we get is also zero so this is all about the null vector In the next class, let us see subtraction of vectors.